Hello everybody, welcome back to our quads tutorial series. So in this one we are continuing on building of our timer service. In the previous video we have looked at how we can fetch the timers that we have running. And in this video we are going to take a look at how we can update them and how we can delete them. One thing that we could do about updating of our timer is, for example, to know how much um, of the fire count is left. For example, here you can see in our timer info we have this total fire count and whenever the timer fires this should go down. So basically we should have something like remaining fire count. So this is something that we could do an update on. So let's add a new property called remaining fire count, create getters and setters for it in the timer info and then we are going to build a method how to update this fire count in our uh, job store. So let's do that. So I have created a new property called remaining fire count and created getters and setters for it. So let's handle the setting immediately. In the playground service is where we create our hello world job. Here we have the, we are setting the total fire count and we can immediately set the remaining fire count. At the beginning, the remaining fire count is five because that's how many times we expect this timer to fire. Okay. That being settled, now we can move to the updating of our service. So, sorry, updating of our timer. That's going to be handled in the scheduler service. So let's create a method which can take in a timer ID and the timer info and update that timer info inside of our scheduler. Okay. So now we have our void method called updateTimer, which takes in the timer ID and the timer info. The next thing what we want to do is to be actually able to fetch our job details. So it's exactly the same as what we have here. Uh, so there is completely no difference. So we can just copy paste this part and basically we can copy paste everything and then we'll just get rid of all things that we don't need. Okay. So the parts that we needed was to fetch the job detail and do the check on the job detail if it's null or not. This is also something that we could extract to a neutral method, but it's not really important to this tutorial, so I'll just keep it as it is. So you can make this code uh, nicer and prettier and just get rid of some of the stuff and move it to some neutral method so that we don't copy paste code all over the place. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to actually update the job data map. The job data map can be fetched from the job details and with that being done, we already have the timer ID. We can just update it with the new info. So let's do that. And that's it. We have the job detail. We are fetching the job data map and we are just overwriting whatever is inside of this job data map on the, under this timer ID. But yeah, as you can see, our method is not called from anywhere. So this is the next thing that we want to do. Uh, calling of this method will be done from the trigger listener. So this qu the quads library has an interface that you can implement, which is triggered every time a trigger is triggered. So every time a trigger fires, you can you can put in some code and it that can be executed. So we need to create a new component. So let's call it something like simple trigger listener or whatever, which will implement this interface from quads. And then we are going to register it somewhere. And then we are going to be calling this method. So let's create a new class first. So here we have our simple trigger listener and this is going to implement the interface from quads. As you can see, this interface uh, has some methods that we have to implement. One is the getting of the name. So we can uh, add some name to our trigger listener and we also have this trigger fired method. So this is the, the, the one that's important for us. And there are also some other ones, but we are not going to be touching them in this tutorial, so we can just leave them as they are. So let's handle the name. Let's just return the, the class name of our um, trigger listener. Okay, that being handled, now we need to take care of some stuff. First thing that we need to do is we need our scheduler service here. So the scheduler service is needed so that we can uh, call the method from the trigger fired uh, method here. So we are going to be calling the method that we just created, so the update timer. This is not a spring component, so we don't have to auto wire or anything. I will show you later on how we can provide the scheduler service inside of this. So let's just add it to the constructor for now. 
So we have our scheduler service injected inside of this trigger listener and now we are going to be using it inside of the trigger fired method. The thing that we need is from the trigger fired uh, we need to call the update timer which is inside of the scheduler service and there we need the timer ID and we need the timer info. So let's see how we can get that. So the fetching of the timer ID is quite simple. It's inside of the trigger get key get name. So the name of the trigger is our timer ID. And from the context, as we did it before, we can get the job details and by the, from the job details, we can get the, uh, the timer info. We can actually copy paste that from our hello world job. So if we jump to it, you can see that we have job execution context here and it's exactly the same thing. So we just can copy paste this and go back to the method. And instead of uh, passing in hello world class name here, we can just use the timer ID that we have. And that's about it. So we are done here. We are fetching the trigger, getting the timer ID from it, getting the job data map and extracting the timer info from it and then passing it to the scheduler to the update timer. And now we are actually not doing any updating. So that's something that we want to do. Here, for example, we are just updating our uh, remaining fire count. So let's see how we can do that. We're going to update the fire count only in the case when we are not um, running forever. So we have to do that check. And with that, we can then just uh, reduce the count. So let's see how we can do that. And it's quite simple. We are fetching the remaining fire count and we are just uh, decreasing it by one. Maybe we could add some check, like if the remaining fire count is already zero, that we don't uh, do anything. So if it's zero, we just return and don't execute anything. Great. Now let's jump to our scheduler service. And inside of it, now we have to register this uh, trigger listener. We can do that in the post, post construct, so that's where we actually need to do it after the scheduler has been started. We have to uh, register this listener. So let's see how we can do that. And it's simple as that. We have the listener manager from the scheduler and there we can add a trigger listener and we are just creating a new instance of our trigger listener and passing in the scheduler service. Uh, to it and that's it so everything should work now and let's handle one more thing before we start our application let's see how we can delete a timer let's create a method for it first we have here our uh, timer ID so we are passing to this method delete timer we're passing in the timer ID and we just want to try to unschedule it so it should be simple so let's try it And that's about it. So we are just calling the delete job with the job key, which is our timer ID, and we are just logging any exceptions that might happen. So let's just implement some methods in our playground service and the playground controller that we can call this delete timer. Actually, we can change this to have a return type, boolean, so that we can know if the timer was deleted or not. And yeah, so this is about it. We have our delete timer inside of the scheduler uh, service, and that's being called from the playground service, and the playground service one is being called from the controller. So that's about it. Let's start our application. And now we should be able to see all of the nice things that we added. We should be able to see the updating and we should be able to see the deletion. Actually, for the updating, we forgot something. We are updating our timer, but we are not actually doing anything with the updated stuff. So we can log it here instead of the callback data. Let's just fix that. Let's restart our application. So we are just logging the remaining fire count. Whenever our uh, job is executed, we want to know what's the remaining fire count. So how many times will it fire more? So 
let's uh, trigger our job. So we are just executing the hello world job. We have started it. And then if we go back to IntelliJ, we can see that we have remaining fire count here being listed. So everything is being updated and looks nice. And after zero, we should not get any more. Yeah, exactly. So it's stopped. Perfect. Now, if we prepare everything, let's do here, create a new delete mapping. And let's copy this, put it here. And instead of the hello world job, let's just add one here. So this is something that doesn't exist. So if we send this, we should get false because we didn't delete anything. And actually, if we even send it like this, we should still get false because this doesn't exist yet. But let's clear our logs here and let's start the job again. And we should be able to see our fire count being logged here. And we should now send a delete. We got true. So it was deleted here and we do not get any executions afterwards, meaning that our job was deleted and it will not be executed again which is super nice, which means that we have implemented successfully everything that we planned and we are quite in time. Perfect. So that would be everything for this video. In the next one, we are going to take a look at the different job stores. So the job store that we are using here, maybe you noticed that, let me just restart the application and I can show you, is called uh, RAM job store. It just means that everything that we are doing with this timer application is being done in memory. So nothing is stored. And the Quads offers a possibility to have a job store in the database. So to use the JDBC job store, which allows you to store your timers in the database. So you can persist them, meaning that if your application restarts, so it stops, the timers are not lost, they are in the database. Once it starts again, so your application, you can continue with those timers, which is super nice, but that we are going to be handling in the next video. So for this one, please do like the video if you liked it. If not, just write me a comment, say what I'm doing wrong, and I will try to fix it. And please do subscribe to my channel if you like this content, and I will try to provide more exciting videos about different programming topics. So I will see you in the next one.